This is Neogreen NAS, the perfect solution for anyone who wants simple and cheap cloud storage and file sharing, as content creators and desktop enthusiasts were always sharing and swapping insanely big files and creating massive backups. You can imagine, our hard drives and Google Drive were always stuffed to the brim, so what's the solution? Pay for even more overpriced cloud storage? No way. Instead, we went down the rabbit hole of self-made clouds. And that's exactly where the Ugreen DXP2800 came in super handy, but it's not just about expanding storage for backups. Nope. It also lets you build your very own cloud with remote link access from anywhere in the world. And that's only the start. You can run virtual machines, set up an AI-powered photo gallery, and install loads of other apps. In today's video, we'll go through the unboxing, setup, the software, and then I'll show you my favorite apps and how you can access it all from literally anywhere. Ugreen was kind enough to send us their DXP2800 and ask for review. This video is therefore sponsored, but I want to make it very clear. We were not given any script, guideline, or restrictions on what we should say. Everything you'll hear in this video is 100% my own honest opinion. So let's start with the unboxing of the NAS. It comes in a sleek, well-designed box with a practical handle on top. Once you open it up, you're greeted with the quick start guide, the warranty card, and all the necessary documentation neatly packed on top. On the left side of the package, you'll find a small black box that contains all the accessories you need to get the NAS up and running. Inside you'll find this standard power adapter. These little keys, which I will show you the function of later in the video, a standard 1 meter ethernet cable, and this little screwdriver right here. Now in the middle of the box, you will find the NAS securely packaged in foam. The NAS in itself is also packaged in another plastic bag. After unpacking that, you are greeted with a very sleek and modern looking NAS. On both sides of the NAS, you can see the Ugreen logo engraved into the high quality metal casing of the device. On the front, you can see the power button, some LED status lights, one USB type C port, one USB type A port, and of course the two bays for the hard drives. On the back, you have this magnetic dust mesh filter, which is quite cool to be honest. You also have one HDMI port, one USB-A 3.2 port, two USB 2.0 ports, one Ethernet connection, a reset button and a power input connector. On the bottom of the device, you'll find four rubber feet. There's also a small slot secured with two screws, behind which you'll find the 8GB of RAM that can be upgraded. Now let's continue with the first setup of the NAS. Ugreen kindly also sent us some storage in this sleek looking box right here. In here, we have two 4TB SATA hard drives, which will be more than enough for me. Now, after unpacking them both, I will put them in the NAS. Right here, we have the two bays, which we will fill each with 4TB, so that we have a total of 8TB, but this NAS is actually capable of doing 76TB, which is honestly quite crazy. By clicking on the bottom, they open up so you can pull out the bays to fill them up. The completely pulled out bay looks like this and is perfectly designed to fit standard 3.5 inch hard drives. When we pull out both the bays, we can actually see the two SATA connectors for the hard drives right here on the back. Another thing you can also see are these two NVMe SSD slots, which you can fill up with extra cash for the NAS, which is a genius feature. But now let's get back to the bay. On the back of them, you can see this little button. When you click on it, it can get wider, so it's easier to put in the hard drives. Right here, I have the first hard drive, and I will put it in facing the shiny side to me. It actually is really hard to put it in the wrong way around because of the clever design. Now we can push back the side part so the hard drive sits securely in the bay. If the side won't close, you probably have the hard drive the wrong way around or a false hard drive. Putting the hard drive back in is also really simple. Just take it and gently slide it back in from the side you took it from. The last part needs a little extra push, but once again, if it won't slide in relatively easy, you might have some wrong hardware. Also push back the part we opened up earlier. Now let's quickly also do the exact same thing with the second bay and the second hard drive. Let's take the little key I've shown you earlier and find out the functionality of it. On the bottom of the base, you can actually see a lock and an unlocked lock. This key exists to lock the hard drives and secure from falling out or somebody simply taking them out. But now let's continue with the rest of the first setup. Take your power cable in ethernet cable that was in the accessories and plug them in. Now it should look like this. Now click on the power button on the front side of the NAS and wait for the NAS to make a beep sound. This might take around 2 to 5 minutes. After the NAS beeped, we can go to our PC and type find.ugnas.com in our browser. Now this window opened up and if you're in the same network as your NAS, it will find it within seconds. Go ahead and click on the big blue connect button. Now this window opened up and in here we can change the device name. I'm gonna change it to unknown tech NAS. Now you just have to accept the user agreement and we are good to go. I'm gonna go with user1 since admin isn't allowed but you can choose any name you want. Now you can enter your email address right here and verify it by typing in the verification code. You got sent to the mail address but I won't show you that since it's really simple. This last window of the setup opened up and you can select which update settings you want to choose but I simply went with the recommended one. Now it's gonna load for about 5 to 10 minutes. The first setup is done so we will continue with the software. After waiting for 5 to 10 minutes, reload the page and you will see this site right here. Login with the user and password you set earlier. 
Inside you get a quick start guide about all of the things you can do, but I will show it to you now in a bit more detail. The control panel is the main app for all kinds of different settings. Let's start with the user management. In here you can see that I currently am the only user, but you can easily add in another user, for example for friends. Now you can set a username and all of the same things as for myself for the other person. You can also set a role so that you can manage which user has rights to access what. I will show you how to create roles right now. Right here in the user group tab, you can add in roles with this blue button. In here, you first of all edit the user group information and give it a name. In the next step, you can select the members that should be in the group. Now you can select the folders the user can access. There are three different possible permissions, either access completely denied, read only, or read and write. In the storage settings back on the home screen, you can create a storage pool by going on storage right here and then clicking on create. Now we will select the two hard drives in here and then the RAID type. You can choose between JBOD, which is not ideal since it's slower and not secure, RAID 0, which is faster but still not the best data protection, and RAID 1, which is the best options for two drives, since one entire drive can fail and you still have all of your data and it's fast, but you only have half of the storage left. I personally won't need 7.2 terabytes of storage for now, so I take the RAID 1 option, which is also recommended, and I also recommend that, but it's your choice. Here you select the volume size and the file system. For everyday use, I recommend X4. Now by clicking on create the storage pool is getting configured. You will also get a warning that the data that is already on the hard drives will be deleted. Simply click on format. Now just enter your password and the process is finished. In this next part of the video, I want to show you some of the coolest apps to install on this NAS. Let's start with the photos app. In here you can see I already uploaded some of my pictures. It's just like a gallery on a smartphone which is super cool to look through old photos on the PC. And the best part is that if you click on the settings in the top right corner here and go to the tab intelligent, you can activate automatic picture recognition. We are going to activate all of them from people to object recognition. Now, if you go to the search bar in the top right, you can search for any topic and it will search for it. If I, for example, search for food, it will find this picture right here. And if I look, for example, for mountain, it will find this picture right here, which is a pretty cool feature. Now another really cool app is the Docker app. First of all, I'm gonna install it in the app center. In the app, you can go to the images on the left side and in the image database, you can find basically everything you wish for in a virtual machine. I, for example, wanted to install Nextcloud and it's already available as an image, but you can also upload a custom image if you want to. But now let's get to my last and favorite point, the remote access in the apps. In the control panel under the point device connection, we can find a tab called remote access. Right here, you can click on this button, then you can activate the remote access and copy this link. Paste the link to your browser and we can access it. I honestly absolutely love this feature. It lets me access my NAS from literally anywhere around the world and not only in the home network. That's so practical for file sharing or using it as a cloud. And another absolutely amazing feature is the Ugreen app, which you can download from the official Ugreen website. After downloading it, the app looks like this. In the top, you can either enter the IP address or the remote access link we created earlier, but I recommend the link because then you can use the app anywhere. And obviously also the username and the password. After logging in, it looks like this. Basically the exact same interface you would see in the browser, but in the form of an app. I personally find this really convenient since it gives you the same functionality while being easier to access on the go. The exact same thing actually also works with the app on your phone. You can get it from the app store. You simply log in with the link and the user credentials. In here, you can look at stats like CPU usage or temperature, but you can also easily upload files or photos, which is really great if you want to back up your phone on the go. The two apps in combination with the remote access link actually blew me away because it simply works great and is such a great addition to my workflow. So that's it for my review of the Ugreen DXP2800 NAS. This device really impressed me, from the solid build and reliable performance to the wide range of features that make it so much more than just storage. The highlight for me is definitely the remote access link. It works flawlessly, is super easy to use, and honestly makes the whole experience next level. If you're looking for a powerful and flexible NAS solution, the Ugreen DXP2800 is definitely worth checking out.